Moving on to our proclamations and presentations. It doesn't look like we have any proclamations, but we do have a presentation from Chris Craig for our Economic Development Action Plan. And Lorraine. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Council and Community, Chris Craig, Economic Development Manager, uh, joined tonight in chambers by Economic Development Specialist Elaine Zashri uh, and by our consultants, Echo Northwest Online via Zoom. Uh, the purpose of this agenda item is for Council to receive an update on the Economic Development Action Plan progress. Uh, project consultant Echo Northwest has been working together with the Business and Economic Development Partnership uh, in development of the plan and will be sharing preliminary priorities identified from discussions with the BDP uh, and community engagement activities. The overall aim of the Economic Development Action Plan is to identify and build consensus uh, around priority actions over the next five to 10 years that will help improve ec economic vitality of the community. Our community has a wide array of needs uh, and this can often lead to an economic development work plan that ends up being kind of a mile wide and an inch deep. Uh, by building consensus on some priority action items, we can all kind of row in the same direction uh, and towards the community goals around economic development and focus our staff time and resources on really dr drilling down on those main priorities. The Economic Development Action Plan has been engaged in the larger Shape Your City community engagement effort, which includes collaboration between consultants uh, and partnering in the community engagement activities and events with other larger ongoing plans, including the Comprehensive Plan Major Update, Transportation Master Plan, and the Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Plan. Um, so no action is required uh, tonight from Council, but staff would appreciate any Council feedback, comments, or questions on the preliminary priorities to help move the, the plan forward. Uh, the final action plan will contain specific economic development uh, goals, strategy, implementation, and an implementation, uh, implementation plan outlining the timing, anticipated cost, and funding source of each of the actions. Staff will be bringing the, the plan back to Council after some uh, additional analysis and prioritization, uh, again, near the end of Q1 or quarter two uh, for approval at a future Council meeting. So uh, with that, I will hand it off to uh, Mary and Emily with Echo Northwest to continue the presentation. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for having us here tonight. Uh, like Chris said, my name is Mary Chase. Uh, I'm an associate with Echo Northwest, and I'm here with Emily Pika, uh, our project director. Uh, if you want to, and we're here to talk about the Economic Development Action Plan. Um, so if we could move to the next slide, thank you. Uh, we have a lot to cover in a short time, uh, so here's a, a quick flyover. Uh, we're going to start with some overview about the plan and what we've done so far, um, then dig into some of the uh, engagement work and what we've heard from pe people, uh, as well as our next steps for evaluating potential actions and strategies in the final plan. Uh, next slide, please. And we can we can keep going. <laughs> Just to start with uh, some of our initial evaluation, uh, we first looked back at the city's last economic development plan from 2014 uh, to see where the city has made progress. And there really is a lot that's been done. Um, as you can see here, the 2014 plan set out this vision for Burien to be a vibrant and creative place, uh, embrace diversity, celebrate arts and culture, value quality of life and environment um, that still resonates a lot today. Um, and the city has made accomplishments with 18 of those 28 actions in the plan done, uh, like tuning up permitting processes, creating state and regional relationships, and adopting strategies for marketing. Uh, there are also some things that are still ongoing processes uh, that you can see here, like supporting walkable neighborhoods and working with the school district, um, and a handful that haven't quite been completed or may need uh, to be revisited or reevaluated. Um, next slide, please. Uh, but it hasn't been a decade, and a lot has happened in Burien and the larger economic landscape since this 2014 plan. Um, so for our updated effort, uh, some of our initial direction was to think strategically about um, equitable outcomes and leaning into support for small business uh, in 2024. We also know it's really important to think about post-pandemic trends and some of those larger changes like remote work and uh, more recent investments in infrastructure uh, in the region and what that means for economic opportunities, uh, as well as actions that can be used citywide, but can also support some of Burien's recent district level work, um, like AMBOM and Boulevard Park areas. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, 
there's also a lot of other work happening in Burien right now, uh, like the transportation system update, uh, parks and open space plan and comprehensive plan update. So one of our goals was to be really um, action oriented and implementation focused uh, and be consistent with those other efforts um, since economic development is really tied in with transportation and land use and public space too. So we were able to work in coordination with those other plans through Shape Your City, which gave us a chance to reach a lot of people, uh, reduce some barriers for engagement and share information between projects. Uh, next slide, please. Um, another important framing part of this plan is that we are rooting ourselves in some of the quantitative analysis about Burien's community and economy uh, to understand what those really important trends are for today. Um, so we know some of the big cha challenges that have happened since 2020, um, and that today a lot of jobs are offering more locational flexibility that can translate into new economic opportunities or challenges. Um, we know Burien is a really diverse community, and it has uh, potential to embrace and celebrate that, like the 2014 plan recognized. Um, and it has potential um, with its recent success uh, with high school graduation rates rebounding after a dip during the pandemic. And um, at the same time, thinking about affordability, um, Burien has some gaps to fill with its average income. You can see in this chart being uh, lower compared to King County overall. And in our report, uh, was I think attached for this meeting and available. Um, we have some other indicators like that to show economic trends. Uh, next slide, please. We have a, a little bit more of that here, um, digging more into economic data. Uh, retail and services are still a big chunk of the local employment. Um, and Burien has a, a strong network of service providers that can support small business. Um, and there have been concern rate in recent years about potential for business displacement and turnover that we're uh, trying to address in this action plan. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so digging a little bit more uh, into what we've heard, um, to get started, you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, we wanted to show some of the grounding for our engagement approach. Um, We've had the opportunity to coordinate with Shape Your City, uh, like Chris mentioned, um, and frame that big picture vision for Burien and understand where economic development fits in with it. Uh, we're also able to target our conversations uh, to try to minimize our asks for the community and avoid over-engaging. So we set up some really targeted uh, opportunities with stakeholders and focus groups that I'll get into a little bit more. Um, and we've also been able to work with the city on including best practices like compensating people for their participation, language inclusion, translation, um, and things like going to businesses and being able to talk to people where they are. Uh, next slide, please. Again, uh, we've really been informed with uh, past plans that have worked since 2014. Um, and all these documents you see listed on the slide, uh, we reviewed for that important context and implications for economic development. Um, for this plan, we wanna be clear that there are some actions uh, that can be relevant throughout the city. Uh, and there are some that can be applied uh, and build to build on progress in specific areas like uh, the Ambom Corridor, Boulevard Park and downtown. Uh, next slide, please. And just to give you all an idea of what we've done so far, uh, we've held over a dozen stakeholder interviews. Um, in October, we had a series of focus sessions around arts and culture, workforce development, and small business, which we held in English and in Spanish. You can see that long list on the right of all the different organizations we've connected with. Um, we've connected with the Burien Economic Development Partnership uh, three times now. Um, and we also had a an in-person open house in December. Uh, and we've been able to, you know, go out and speak with business owners and really try to hear their concerns and priorities for the plan. Uh, next slide, please. Just to give a little bit more uh, information about that December open house, we had about 75 attendees um, and we had an economic development activity uh, where people were able to take their dots and prioritize potential actions uh, for supporting the workforce, attracting visitors, and assisting small businesses in Burien. Um, and bringing that all together, uh, in the next slide, we have some summary of challenges, and then our next one, we talk about opportunities that we've heard. Um, but they've really been around these three major themes of arts and tourism, uh, community workforce, and small business. Um, and we've been working on 
creating actions now uh, that we're going to get to in a few minutes to address these challenges and uh, follow some of the opportunities um, for arts and tourism. Some of those have been around uh, lack of physical space, um, challenges with finding funding and donations, as well as challenges for tourism and attracting visitors like negative perceptions around crime and safety and the need for a more cohesive and strategic uh, visitor attraction campaign. Um, and one of the big points too has been a lack of a hotel in Burien. Um, around community workforce, we've also heard that there are barriers uh, that can limit youth participate, sorry, participation uh, in internships, apprenticeships, uh, and challenges around language and the need for uh, some more employee inclusion. Um, and for small businesses, difficulty accessing resources and finding uh, physical spaces. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and some of these opportunities I think are going to lead in. Uh, I'm going to pass it off to Emily in just a minute. Uh, but we've heard some things that the community would like to see around uh, arts and tourism, like the feasibility of creating a performing arts center, um, continuing some of the city's uh, efforts to attract a hotel to Burien, um, community workforce. Uh, initiatives where the city could be a convener for a lot of things with uh, bringing together existing programs and supporting development of new ones uh, through partner organizations and ways to continue supporting uh, small businesses. So Emily, I think, I think I should pass it off to you to start talking about our framework. Next slide, please. And one more. So we're at a point now in the process where we're taking all of the ideas that have come in through the engagement and through the research that we've been doing and we're running them through a filter. And this is this framework for evaluation. So we're looking at what did we hear about this action in the community engagement that we did? Um, who does the program reach and how much does it help the people that it reaches? That's around impact and, and equity. We're also looking at um, what kind of return on investment the city can receive from potential investments and potential like looking at tourism or looking at a hotel, what would be the revenues that might come in that could support additional projects, additional activities and additional um, business development in the city. And then finally, we're looking at what it would take to actually implement each action. So what's the level of investment that would be required for the city? What kind of partnerships are needed? What kind of funding sources could the city leverage from other sources to support its goals? And what kind of administrative burden or staffing is required? We know that the economic development department at the city gets a lot done with a pretty lean staff, and we want to be cognizant of not overloading their work plan with too many actions that are dispersed in too many ways. So we would like to hear in our discussion today, if you all have any feedback about how to think about the portfolio of actions that the city will take in its next 10 years, um, and specifically around how should we prioritize actions and what things should we look at prioritizing for the next one to three years. So if you wanna to go to the next slide, we have some of those discussion questions. Um, specifically, is there anything missing from our calculus? We're trying not to think about too many different potential filter filtering pieces, but we also want to be comprehensive. Um, and are there any specific next steps that you can think through? Final slide, please. So wrapping it up, we are, like I said, at an inflection point, the opportunities that Mary outlined, we are in the middle of developing those into projects with all of the various implementation steps, descriptions of all the roles, whether the city would lead on the, on the action or whether it would partner with other entities and how these actions connect with the city's previous plans um, we want to make sure that we are reflecting all of the work that the city has done in the past decade since the last action plan was created. So you'll see us, um, well, first we have a conversation with the BEDP on February 23rd, and then you'll see us back here on March 18th for a final presentation to review the draft plan. And that's that's it for our presentation. And I'll just uh, add real quickly, big picture, uh, just to reiterate where we're at is we've really uh, gathered a lot of information from past community engagement efforts, including the Anvil and Boulevard Park plans, the Urban Center plan, and, and a number of community surveys and business surveys. So that all went into uh, kind of the ideation behind a lot of these, uh, the actions that you will see uh, eventually here. 
Um, but right now we're still kind of gathering all of that information. Uh, we have a long list of actions to start evaluating. Uh, and so what we're looking for here is just additional any additional guidance from council on uh, if there, if we're going down the right track here, thinking about the right things, if there's other uh, ways that we should think about evaluating actions uh, other than the, the framework that uh, Emily went through earlier today. So. Thank you. Any council members want to start? Council member Mata. So I'm curious of uh, the transportation. I know that we have the H lane and, um, you know, the other thing is that I know that uh, Sun Transit is talking about having some uh, new transportation that'll be going from Burien down to Redmond. Um, question is, you know, how is the expansion of, of 509 going to impact as a city, right? Because now we're going to have a freeway that's going to be going from the Seattle port uh, right through our city here to um, I-5, and so I'm sure there's going to be sound walls, and so I'm wondering how that'll impact us. Uh, and really, is there going to be a long-term range plan? And, and I don't really know what Sun Transit and Metro have talked about for their 20-year 20, you know, 20 plan, uh, but just in the transportation arena, as we grow as a city, as we attract new people, uh, how is the uh, flow of people, the flow of traffic going to impact our ability to grow? Um, and is that freeway and the expansion of the freeway either going to bring more people or is it going to cause more people to stay away? Thank you. Other comments, questions, thoughts? Council Member Sarah. I think Council Member Aki. Oh, okay. Then see ya. Council Member Aki. Okay. <laughs> either way. Thank you, Council Member Moore and Mayor. Um, so, Thank you very much. Um, having been on the BEDP for the last four and a half years, it's really great to see the plan um, coming to fruition. Uh, I do think what is interesting is how we're going to move the city forward in these additional areas. The downtown core has really been working very hard for the last 10 years, and we can definitely see the impacts of the growth that we've had in housing opportunities that are here and the growth of our businesses in the downtown core. And that success seems pretty obvious to me and um, what I've seen uh, over the years that I've been here. Um, but we have a lot more um, that will be happening along that Am Ambom corridor along first and as we work to grow Boulevard Park as well. So I'll be interested in seeing, you know, where the plan can go with that um, in making sure that these other areas are developed in um, a good way, you know, in terms of what businesses we're bringing in, what um, level of density we're bringing in in the housing and even creating walkability within those communities, um, as we see here in the downtown core, the benefits of that. Um, so, you know, there's transportation and then there's, you know, how can we make it for people to be able to get to the grocery store and uh, get to restaurants that are in their area and, um, you know, having a sense of community in each of those areas. So I look forward to uh, that within the plan. And thank you again for all of the hard work that you've put in in being able to bring the plan to us now. Thank you. Council Member Sarah. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, that was a great presentation. I thank you for it. Um, I had a couple of questions. One kind of follows up on um, Council Member Mata's question about 509. Um, as that grows and, and as it connects with I-5, how do we prevent Burien from becoming kind of East Burien and West Burien? Because it is going to be a, a physical divide between those two areas. Um, and the other question has to do with how we close the loop after doing a community survey. Um, how, how, you know, sometimes the successes are really visible and sometimes somebody feels like their input wasn't heard because we follow a different set of impacts. Um, so I'm, I'm curious what we do to kind of demonstrate to the community that parts of this are being followed through. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the first part, um, that's probably something we'll have to come back to you to. It involves a lot in the transportation master plan and a lot of other things that outside of our, our area of focus. Uh, but that's certainly a good question about how that those changes in, in those highways affect the kind of surrounding community. Um, for the second uh, question, um, I, I think what we would like to do is start communicating back when we've gotten kind of an idea of where some of this plan is going. 
And we've got, again, we've got a super long list of actions at this time, which we're going to go start uh, start an analyzing with our, our framework. Uh, but we'll start communicating back with folks that uh, both uh, were part of our focus groups or one-on-one -on -one interviews about where we're at with the status of the plan. Uh, we have a web page on our city hub, which is our community engagement hub, where we'll update more information here uh, shortly. Uh, and then we have uh, Lorraine does an amazing job with our economic development e-newsletter, which go, goes out to 1,200. I ask every time. Every time I ask, it's another 100 more than it was last time. Uh, but it goes out between 12 and 1,500 uh, contacts. Uh, if council members uh, haven't signed up for that, we would love to have you on that as well. Uh, but we also have a very active social media uh, presence as well. Where we'll continue to communicate out actions uh, and information that we get as we move forward. Uh, so a lot to come here uh, over the next couple weeks here as far as updating folks once we've had a chance to check in with council and we'll continue to do that. Uh, I think usually the message I share with people is that, uh, you know, we can never make guarantees that what we hear will happen. Uh, what we can do is allow them to understand the uh, paths and ways that they can participate in the process. And in the end, you know, it's a democratic process where the, the ideas that have the most support, that garner the most interest, uh, kind of rise to the top. And, and, uh, and so that's really the process that we'll follow. Uh, but we will uh, communicate back uh, through our various channels and with those folks that have participated because we do very much appreciate their time. Thank you. Councilor Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, great presentation, uh, Chris. Thank you very much. And to our um, partner, um, a lot of work is going on, months and months of work. A couple of points, I guess, questions. Is this one for the uh, consultant? There's been you know, 12 interviews, focus sessions, business interviews. Is there a number on totality, number of people uh, that have been outreach? We do have 50 plus thousand residents uh, and the follow-up question to that is, I noticed that there was, you know, focus sessions on business owners, on, I think, uh, residents. Um, was there anything done to get feedback from visitors? And what I mean, let me elaborate a little bit, is we have visitors that come to churches here from outside of the city. All these people spend money here, uh, contribute to our tax base, uh, but more specifically workers. Um, we have business owners who don't live here in Buren, and we also have employees who don't live here in Buren, but they come here and contribute to our city and help run all these businesses. Um, was there an effort to outreach to workers, to um, unions, to find out, can we get their feedback on what, what the same questions we had the rest of the residents? I guess those are the two, two things. And then for you, the one question, I guess, is it's a really ambitious um, plan. You know, it's been ambitious since 2014. We have a few projects in the middle. What's the budget for it? What's your overall budget that you have to get this done? You know, I'd like to know what the budget is for that, what it was in 2014, going forward, what it will be, because we have to make sure that you have the resources to make this happen. We can ask for whatever we want, but as we get further along this year, we have to make some really hard budget decisions, and it's going to be very important for us to know those numbers. So, yeah, and I can, I'll go backwards, and I mean, you might have to remind me of the first one again, but uh, as far as budget, th this is certainly one, one of the big aspects of this is we'll have an implementation plan with the priorities that we'd like to implement and a dollar, you know, rough dollar amount of what that's going to look like. Uh, and certainly that's one of our frameworks is if it's something that there's no way in heck we're going to be able to afford, then that, you know, becomes a challenge and maybe that lowers the priority of that action item. Uh, but we'll have a number for each so that the council can make informed decisions as we come forward with those budget requests for sure. Um, with regards to the outreach, uh, we really did depend a lot. You know, one of the things we wanted to do is we've got all of these larger plans going out on the street. You know, we had the Ambom and Boulevard Park plans. We had so many pop-up, you know, uh, events for folks to drop in. Uh, we had online surveys. We had open houses. We wanted to leverage that information because a lot of those had economic development elements. They had economic development feedback that went in. We certainly didn't limit it to only, you know, folks that had to be residents, workers, anyone can really engage on those issues if they feel they want to get involved in it. So we didn't certainly didn't limit it at all. Mm -hmm. um, we did do some additional outreach regarding visitors, like we had, uh, I believe the uh, Regional Tourism Authority was in one of our focus groups to be able to share uh, their thoughts. We also had a workforce uh, 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 roundtable that had a number of our uh, local uh, education institutions, colleges, high schools, uh, Puget Sound Skills Center, those type of organizations. 
Uh, so we did, we did certainly not limit who could participate in the process. Um, I, I don't believe we did any intentional outreach uh, to some of the groups you mentioned, other than the BDP does have a rep from the King County Labor Council on it as well, uh, who provides comments from kind of that labor perspective as well. Um, and then I forget the first question you had was the uh, total number of oh. participants in general. Good Granted, question. there's not one specific to this, but maybe yeah. from all the projects. Um, I went, I know how challenging it is to get yeah. people to get involved, but I think it's important for us to know how many actually provided this feedback yeah. to take into consideration because there is a lot more that don't provide feedback. Yeah, and uh, we can follow up with you on that. I know our communications division was actually looking for that information from each uh, big plan so they could consolidate that into a report. Uh, so I don't think we have that gathered yet about how many people were engaged across all of the plans, but we can share that. Uh, I'll mention that to our comms department. Before I ask my question, just wanted to share to folks that right now the live stream and channel 21 is having a little bit of technical difficulty. Uh, they're working on fixing it. The Zoom is working fine, though, for folks if you want to join remotely, if you're hearing this. Um, would people be hearing this <laughs> if the channel 21 and live stream is not working? Um, but if people are texting you wondering why uh, there's a technical difficulty. So um, my, my, my comments on this, uh, two of them have already been touched on and pretty elaborately, but I just want to emphasize that I think um, we could be doing more for our commercial real estate, uh, incentivizing mixed use and residential in areas that are not being utilized, um, meaning move, growing up, not necessarily growing out, but growing up um, in commercial areas. Um, secondly, you've been touching on workforce development, and I think that's fantastic. I think we need to be doing much more um, in our community to bring educational opportunities. I mean, one of the reasons why the median income or the average income in Burien is not comparable to King County is because when you add up all of King County economic activity, we don't have Microsofts. We don't have the tech industry in Burien. Um, so we, we don't compare to a lot of the average of King County for that reason. But if we can work to attract uh, more jobs and more, more workforce that does include higher income level work, I think that would be beneficial. Um, and then... Lastly, for me, is um, our kind of healthcare and wellness corridor. Um, I think we can be working hard to um, expand and emphasize that quite a bit. Uh, we're a city with a regional hospital. We have dozens of dentists and chiropractors and uh, doctors and all kinds of medical offices throughout the city. Um, and they've been great community members and people have been going to their doc doctor or dentist in Burien for their entire lives. Um, so I think that's something that we can uh, work to emphasize too, that that's a significant element of our of our economy, our healthcare wellness sector. Okay. Oh, one more. Yeah, I, I want to emphasize that with the healthcare because, um, you know, we have a child birth birthing center here. My, my uh, daughter was born here in Burien and so she felt proud of that and figuring out how we can move people. So whether it's a trolley, whether it's some kind of street transportation, we have we also have a lot of retirement homes here in Burien where you know these are people yes on fixed income but they have enough money to be able to come out to downtown have some dinner you know it was just the other day I was out outside of Burien and you know right away I said you know I'm not going to go eat anywhere else because I can go choose in Burien what I want to eat you know and so I think that that's the other thing we're already foodie paradise um, and and maybe we 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 start working with some of the hotels to bring people in and then take people out. So that would say, does that make sense, right? Is it economically feasible? And is there a return of investment if we were to have a nonprofit um, run a trolley or a bus? Thank you. Okay, thank you all. Thank you all so much. Any other final thoughts or comments? No, just appreciate all the feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you.